you to raise your hand if you're glad you hadn't put on a green shirt in the last day or two. <laughs> and pretty much everybody's going to raise their hand. Um, we had an awesome, awesome week. You can tell. I'm going to let the video just speak for itself, and I won't say much, but I uh, did just want to say a couple of words. And there's some information on the back of your bulletin, uh, just some facts and figures about our VBS. We had 128 children that came through our doors at some point during the week, and that was amazing. Um, we had some weather obstacles, but we had plenty of people to just handle those in fine fashion, so that worked out great. Uh, we had 80 or so, give or take a couple, adults and youth on site every night to welcome these children and to love them and to teach them and to feed them and to do all these things, and it was just incredible to watch. And I would just say for me personally, that was uh, one of the most wonderful things about the week, was just seeing this church come together uh, to do some awesome things for those kids. And uh, I just don't even know how to put that into any other words. So I want to say thank you. Uh, we collected an offering for to raise money to um, buy sheep. Our Senegal team that's going this September is going to buy sheep for families in Senegal. And we kind of went into the week thinking we would raise maybe $150, maybe 200 if we were extremely fortunate. And those kids just came in with coins and money dripping out of their pockets in their little banks, and they raised $1,100 for sheep. Yeah. And people are still handing Anna money this morning, so uh, it's, it's awesome. And so thank you for that. Um, I just want to say a special word of thanks to Anna Good and Edward and Melanie Skillman and Jenna Wood who led us through the week like just, just selflessly, tirelessly. Um, they worked their tails off and they coordinated all of the things that were going on and, and appreciate them so much. And if you see them, just, just tell them great job. Um, I think that's maybe all I want to say. The people that help behind the scenes, and you know who you are, um, maybe before the week even happened, uh, thank you to you too. Uh, it was just incredible. And uh, I just want to thank this church for, um, for allowing us to do these, these kinds of things. And, uh, you know, as I reflect on the week, I just think, why was it so great? It was so great because when we allow God to move in us to do things, uh, it, and this is what happens. So uh, just thank you if you were a part of it, and if you weren't, maybe next year. Good deal. Thank you, Kathleen, for, uh, for heading that thing and for kind of coordinating us all. Uh, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Lester Memorial this morning. It's been a great, great week. Uh, we're excited about what God is doing in, the, in our midst here at Lester Memorial, and uh, one of those things is welcoming a new pastoral family. Uh, Harvey, if you and Lana and, and uh, granddaughter Maddie would stand just briefly, I hope all of you will have a chance to greet them uh, uh, before the day is out. And as a, um, having, having been in a new situation before, for the next several weeks, every time you see them, repeat your name. Don't guess that, that uh, Harvey's got a great memory. But um, it's not that good. So, so re remind them of your name to help them out as we, uh, as we move forward in ministry together. So uh, we have a long list of announcements here in your bulletin. I'm not going to go over all of them. Pretty much a regular schedule this week, except that the office will be closed on, on Wednesday. Um, please be a part of what's going on here at Lester Memorial and um, uh, help, help us as God moves uh, in our midst. So uh, let's go to God in prayer as we begin our worship. Almighty God, what a great day it is for the, uh, for the joy that's in this room because of the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, for a great week, uh, and we thank you, God, for uh, what you're going to be doing in the future as our, our new pastor comes and leads us. We ask that you would be with us this day as we worship, uh, open our hearts and minds that as your scriptures are read and the word is proclaimed that we might hear with joy what you have to say to us today. We make this our prayer in the precious name of Christ. Amen. would stand with me let's worship together this morning <clears throat> this may be a new one for some of you guys so uh, sing along when you can come and stand
Seated. Good morning, everybody. Good to see y'all. Y'all look nervous. <laughs> Just relax. It's all right. Now, somebody asked me, are you nervous? I said, of course I am, uh, in a good way. So uh, anyway, it's good to be with you. During our prayer time, if you're visiting with us, uh, we're grateful and thankful that you're here on Communion Sundays, we have the offering plates on the side. If you want to give offering this morning, uh, that's the way we'll do it. We won't take up an official offering this morning, but uh, on Communion Sundays, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, but it's good to be with you. I know that many of you said you've been praying for us, and we deeply appreciate it. I know you've been praying for Barry and Cindy. I love them deeply, and we'll pray for them. I'll be praying this morning also for all the pastors that are, that are new uh, this morning, and uh, but it's good to be a part of the herd. Uh, <laughs> Madeline and I came Friday night to the vacation Bible school. It was awesome. So we're going to pray this morning for all those kids that the Word of God that was taught, that they'll stick and stay in there with them. So uh, pray for that. I noticed also that uh, you had our son Dave on there. I appreciate that. Uh, he does live with us, and uh, 
appreciate you praying for him. I know you already had been. Barry told me that, so thank you for that. Um, we also have got a Philippines team that will be leaving, uh, Jake Fuller and Rachel King and uh, Chris Roberts. They're all going on that team. There's also a young lady by the name of Elizabeth Barnes from Gadsden First Methodist. She went last year with Tyler and the team, and so they're going to go again. You all have a great reputation of reaching out. Um, you got to reach out for Vacation Bible School, but also I know that you've already taken another team, another group. Uh, and you went to Appalachian Service Project, Chris did, and had a good week. I mean, Skylar, thank you. I got it. Obadiah, Casey, I got it, okay. Right. <laughs> Skylar's middle name is Chris, y'all didn't know that, but anyway, just call him Chris, he'll, he'll answer to it. Golly bum, I done messed up. That's, what, that's good though, I've already put my foot in my mouth. Uh, I usually come and kneel at the altar when I pray, and I'll probably continue to do that, may not every Sunday, but that's just what I do. You're welcome to come join me anytime if you have a special need this morning, and uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we praise you this morning. We acknowledge that you are the strong Son of God, Jesus. And we glorify you and praise you. I thank you, God, for my brothers here who lifted you up as they worshiped you, but they led us in worship, and I pray you'll continue to bless them. God, as we gather this morning, uh, this is your church. Uh, you are Lord over this church, and I thank you, God. And I thank you that... Uh, your call has led me this way. Uh, Lana and I have been blessed everywhere we've been to just be a part of the herd, be a part of the family, and we praise you for that and thank you for that. I thank you, God, for all these here at this church, and I thank you, God, for the ministry and the outreach and already the witness that they are. Uh, may that continue, God. Uh, I praise you and thank you, God, for your grace in this day. I pray not only for myself but for new pastors everywhere, especially in United Methodist Church, this being the first Sunday. I pray for a powerful anointing, God, to bless uh, our church worldwide across uh, North Alabama and around the world, God, whether it be Senegal or, or whether it be the Philippines or whether it be Appalachian Service Project or BBS. Thank you, God, for servants. And God, again, the reputation here is just great servants who love Jesus, and I pray, Holy Spirit, you'll continue to anoint them, uh, guide them, uh, lead them, in, in all the ways that you already do, and we thank you, God. We ask, God, you bless this offering that we have. May you uh, use it for your glory and for your kingdom. Continue to bless us in this service. I pray, God, for those who are listening on our prayer list, I thank you that in your word you've told us in James that we may pray for one another that you may be healed. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you that we don't have to understand everything about healing because God knows I don't but yet I know that it is your word that we can pray. And so we pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that all whom we're thinking about right now be touched by the love and the grace of God, that healing and love and wholeness will come to those whom you touch Jesus. Because when you heal a person, you always look at the whole person, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and physically. God, do that right now as we think of those we're praying for. Come, Holy Spirit, come and do a work in their heart and their lives. Now continue to bless in this service. It's yours. You are why we have come. We pray this in the name of Jesus. And all the people said, Amen. 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 You were the same in the beginning. One with God the
song in this cell is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm be seated and even the children want to go out to children's church uh, Kathleen and the team will be meeting right over there at that door if any of the kids want to go if you're visiting with us you're welcome to go out for children's church and, uh, does it rain and lightning every day in Oniana <laughs> Y'all ain't even noticed it, have you? <laughs> My goodness of the lightning. And all the praise team reminded it, it is all about Jesus. Jesus is Lord all day today, and he will be Lord tomorrow. We are grateful and thankful to uh, be here at Lester Memorial and Oniana. See, I know how to say it for the, those who call it Oniana and Aniana. I know y'all pronounce it two different ways. And, uh, and then there's Waniante. But uh, <laughs> it's good to be in Oneana, and it is home for us. Uh, Lana and I early on in ministry, wherever God sent us, that's home. So we, we were home at Gadsden first, and we're home here. Uh, we did buy a house here. PPR, uh, Butch Wallace and them at PPR, they asked me, you know, when I was planning on retiring, I said, when I'm 88, because we just bought a house, and we don't pay it off till we're 88. So uh, <laughs> that's when I will retire. So... Uh, Appreciate you and love you this morning. Let's just pray just a moment. God, your grace is sufficient. Let your grace touch us today through your word. Um, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this time. Bless it now. Let us hear from you. Word of God, speak in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for all the cards, all the emails, the text. I mean, if you've sent word to us and some great food. Someone brought us, and I'm sorry I can't remember the name, but some uh, blueberries from uh, Locust Fork, Alabama. 
about a gallon and a half, and uh, they're good. So thank you for all the warm welcome and everything. I uh, want to thank some of the teenagers. Skylar brought several young men over, and they came and unboxed and unloaded about 2,000 boxes, and, uh, <laughs> and we still got 10,000 left. No, we're, we're worn out. I'm going to tell you, moving. Don't, don't try it. Don't do it. And, uh, but anyway, uh, I want to share just a little bit about my testimony over the next few weeks. Um, and I'll tie in the scriptures because the same scriptures that touch and convict and comfort me, they convict and comfort you as well. And so uh, that's what I'll do over the next few weeks. Lana and I will have been married 39 years in August. And uh, we got married and her favorite rose is yellow, roses. And uh, so I don't know, Lana, I bought those for you this morning. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm lying. I didn't. I don't know who got them, but thank you. You didn't know that was her favorite rose, but... Uh, it really is, and we were, we were married, and she grew up in Gallup, Alabama. Y'all have heard of that, right down the road, County Road 35. And uh, so we were married in Bethlehem Baptist Church, right there at the edge of Etowah County and St. Clair County up on the hill, and that's where we were married. And uh, we did have yellow roses that night. And uh, I grew up in Ivory. That's a suburb of Atala. If y'all know where it is, some of you know where Ivory is, but that's where I grew up. Our parents are... Uh, they still are with us, and we thank God for that, and uh, her mom and dad, Mr. and Ms. Galloway, and my mom and dad in Ivory, and they're still with us, and I thank God for that. I grew up in Red Hill United Methodist Church, which is on the Gallant Highway in Ivory, uh, just to let you know a little bit of background. Lana and I have known each other. She was in the third grade, and I was in the fourth grade at Ivory, and of course, you know back then we called it having recess. As you young people don't know what recess is, but we, all, some of y'all grinning, you're dating yourself. Well, at recess, uh, the third and fourth graders got to go out on the playground together. And uh, I'd say Red Rover, Red Rover, send Lana right over. So we've known each other for a while. And, uh, but anyway, she asked me out on the first date, though. I'll let you know that. That's information you needed to know. <laughs> we have two children, Dave, he's 34, Aldra's 32. Uh, Dave and Jamie have Madeline, and she'll turn 11 here in a couple of months. And uh, Audra is our daughter. She married Blake Wilkes. I was his pastor for nine years up at Crossville, and I married them. So I married Audra and Blake. And they have our grandson, Faber, and he's about 17 months old or so, and he got his name from his dad. Uh, Blake had prayed and asked God to give his wife Favor, my daughter Audra Favor. And uh, he had a couple of scriptures and biblical he was thinking about God just bless my wife and bless our family and bless us with a child. Bless us, God, with favor. And so when she came to him and said, uh, I'm with child, he said, well, if it's a boy, I think God wants us to name him favor. So it's kind of a cool story, and that's how he got his name, favor. Um, our son Dave does live with us. Some of you know a little bit about it, but Dave, he's been on dialysis. Uh, August will be five years, and so... Uh, We'll continue to take him back and forth at the exit right there at Atala. There's a Fresenius dialysis right there, and he's been there five years. He also has been under hospice care for two years in August, and uh, he's going to be able to keep the same nurse and tech and all with hospice. So, uh, but anyway, he's, he, his, his bedroom now is in our dining room. So at Gadsden, he was in the, in the parlor, and I told him, I said, Son, you're in high cotton. You've been in the parlor, and now you're going to the dining room. So he's moving up. He says, As long as i got a TV, I'm good. And... Uh, Thank you for praying for him. Awesome VBS, Kathleen, all the servant volunteers, uh, awesome. It was great. I, I did mention my prayer, Barry Hallman. I just want to thank God. Barry and I have been friends. We've been in a covenant group for probably 17, 18 years. So he and I are very close, and I thank God for he and Cindy and the work that he's done. And, uh, and uh, I look forward to him continuing to come and be a part of CR, celebrate recovery, and so forth, and um, being around and being a part of our lives. And uh, so... I uh, thank God for him. Joe Hastings, Brother Tommy Stewart, I've known them both for a while. Part of my connection with Tommy has been through Emmaus Walks, and uh, I was on Walk 167, Lana was on Walk 168, so it was kind of neat we experienced that both that close together. But anyway, uh, I know last week I listened to Joe's sermon, and uh, he said something about a storm coming, and uh, change is coming, and a big storm, and, and Harvey and Lana are coming. I'm like, <laughs> so the storm is here, Hurricane Harvey. So uh, I told you I'd get you. 
I want to share this, that Lana wrote this. Um, Lana did not marry a preacher. Uh, we were married about nine years before God called me to preach. But uh, I call her Miss Noah sometimes. I wish we knew Noah, Noah's wife's name. We don't, so I call Lana Miss Noah. She's got a lot of faith. She wrote this on Facebook. Some of you may have uh, seen it, but I just I asked her could I share it um, just to let you sense her heart as well. She wrote this not only to y'all but also to Gadsden First. I can't believe that six years have passed by so quickly while at Gadsden First United Methodist Church. You have ministered beside us. You have ministered to us during some of the best and some of the hardest days of our lives. I do know from experience that we are not leaving you. We are just adding you to our treasured collection of extended family. We pray for you and we pray for our brand new family at Lester Memorial in Oneonta. Our paths are not an accident. God orders our steps and he walks beside us no matter what, where we are. Love and blessings, Lana Beck. I thought that was a good word. She has lived through me with this call and uh, there's a proverb that I often quote that says, talks about God ordains our steps. A uh, man's steps belong to the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? That's one of those that's in my spirit. Uh, I came here last night and uh, I wasn't sure if Barry or anybody told me y'all had surveillance cameras or not. I don't know if you do. We did at Gadsden, so if you came in the building, somebody knew it. But I was in here in the dark, and I came and knelt, and I prayed in here last night, and I went over in the sanctuary, place of worship there, and I just prayed and asked God to come and do a work that only he can do. Um, I can preach, but only he's the one that can touch the human heart. And uh, so I prayed and asked God blessing on this service. I first want to share Revelation 12, Revelation 12, 11, the scripture that will come up on the screen. And I did mention to the staff that I was going to talk about testimony. And I, this is a passage that I want to go back to. If you're familiar with Revelation 12, it's where war was going on and uh, in the spirit realm. And uh, it mentions Satan several times. And so in this verse, it says, and they, that is the people of believers, and they overcame him, that is Satan. They overcame Satan by the blood of the lamb three things they overcame satan by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives even unto death now there were martyrs and so forth but i think that also includes the fact that you believe what you believe and you're going to carry it to your grave you're going to have eternal life and so you believe it even unto death i know in whom i have believed and i'm persuaded that god's able to keep that which i have committed unto him until that day we're believers. We believe that even until we die. We go to the grave with that. But through this life that we're going through, we depend upon the blood of the Lamb. And we're about to share in communion in a moment. And it is a vivid reminder that somebody had to die for us. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And so we read here that they overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb, but also by the word of their testimony. Don't underestimate the testimony that God has given you. It's not going to be the same as mine. And God's not going to call everybody to preach. He does some, but he's going to call you in some form or fashion. So you have a testimony. But when we testify of Christ, we overcome. The blood of the Lamb, the word of testimony, and they did not lo love their lives even unto death. You believe what you believe. Uh, so over the next several weeks, Lord willing, I plan to share and talk about my own testimony. In fact, next week, if you want to read ahead, I'm going to, I'm going to preach, Lord willing, it may change, but from 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, a significant thing about God's call on my life. So you remember that Paul wrote his second letter. It was the last letter. It's where he wrote in there, uh, my departures at hand. Those are dying words. So the last letter that we have of the Apostle Paul, he writes to a young preacher. And so to me, it's critical what he told him. And one of the emphasis that he gave him was preach the word. So that'll be next Sunday, but that's a part of my testimony in my life. Uh, here's another one, Isaiah the 6th chapter, and this is what I want to focus on right now. So Isaiah the 6th chapter, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. He was high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. What a vision he got to see. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. 
With two, he covered his feet, and with two, he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it. And he said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. Also, I heard, I heard the voice of the Lord, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And then I said, here am I, send me. When God began to call me in the mid to late 80s. Uh, this was one of the passages of Scripture, and I've heard testimonies of many preachers that the Holy Spirit used this same passage. But during that time of me begging God, please get somebody else, because I did. I, I was a beggar during that time. And, uh, but I asked the Lord, you know, please, God, you surely not me. And then sermons would well up in my spirit. And so I, I wrestled with the Lord. I say I wrestled with him. I just wanted him to get somebody else. I loved him. Lana and I were highly involved in church during that time. I taught Sunday school. I was a youth counselor at the churches we served in Montgomery before then. But uh, anyway... This scripture got inside of me along with a couple of others, but this was one, and I knew that eventually I would have to say out loud. I don't know why the Lord, but he pressed on me. I want you to say it out loud. I want you to say, here I am, send me. And so this week, Tuesday, June the 26th, 1988, 30 years ago, so it's significant to me as I'm sharing this testimony with you that on that night, on June the 26th, 1988, We'd been to church there at Christ Central. Brother George Creel is our pastor. And uh, we had a visiting preacher, a Nazarene preacher. I don't even remember his name. I don't remember what he preached on, but I knew God was stirred in my heart that night. And we came home. It was, it was, uh, the sun was going down. There were a few clouds in the sky, and it was about to get dark. And I went out in our backyard. We owned a house there in Southside in Gadsden. And I worked for medical equipment and uh, company and uh, all that was running through my mind. I'm thinking, God, I've got a wife and two kids. You know, I, I, I don't know, God. And I went out into the yard, and again, I, I literally prayed, God, please, if you're really calling me to preach, let me see written in the clouds, yes, Harvey, I am calling you. <laughs> Guess what? I never saw that. But I pleaded for it. Please, God, let that come forth, you know. It didn't come, but I knew I would have to come in faith, which is another one of the scriptures. It's Hebrews 11:6. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he or she who comes to God must believe that he is and that God is a rewarder of those who will diligently seek him. I knew I'd have to come in faith. And so what I did, and I had this passage on my mind here in Isaiah 6, and uh, I knelt down, and then I fell flat on the grass. I laid my hands out, and I can smell the grass every time I tell this testimony. I laid my face in the ground, and I said, here I am. Send me. And lo and behold, here I am in Oneonta, Alabama. That's a part of my call. That's a part of my testimony. Testimony is a powerful thing. If the Word of God says we can overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and testify of that Lamb, of what he's done in our lives, and we believe that until we die, we're going to overcome. That's how we overcome. Your testimony is powerful. It may be that God's wanting you to go across the street and share your testimony with somebody. It may be God's going to call you to preach the word. He doesn't everybody, but he does some. But on that night, uh, I went in and I shared with Lana. She knew God had been dealing with me, but uh, when I went in and told her on that Sunday evening 30 years ago, uh, June the 26th, uh, she was silent for days because she knew the effect it would have on our family and changes. And so she uh, began to pray. And I went to George Creel. He was my pastor at the time on Monday morning. I shared with him. And then I went to see a district superintendent by the name of Brother Burt Goodwin. Y'all ever heard of him? 
Now, I'd known Brother Burt my whole life because when he was at Camp Sumatonga, my great-grandmothers both cooked in the old pool camp. So some of you who went. In fact, the old cookbook, the cookbook, the history cookbook at Camp Sumatonga has got a picture of my two great-grandmothers in there cooking in the old pool camp. Mama Powell and Grandmama Mama Norton. So some of you may remember Lizzie Powell. But uh, anyway, that's a part of how I know Brother Burt, too. But when I came in and shared with Brother George Creel, he looked at me and said, I was just waiting, Brother. I knew it would happen sooner or later. I went to see Brother Burt, and he said, Harvey, you all know add that more, Harvey. I knew God had a call on your life. And uh, I was still scared to death. But anyway, that's a part of the testimony of my life. I pray that you have a testimony of what the blood of the Lamb has done for you. As we prepare ourselves to come to communion, um, Isaiah, if you read Isaiah, and I love Isaiah, uh, if you read the first five chapters, he uses the phrase, what are you, what are you, in the first five chapters. He's just woeing everybody when he's preaching. He's already preaching, woeing everybody. But when he got in the presence of a holy and righteous God, all he could say was, woe is me, I'm undone. I want you to consider this morning as you come to communion, because woe is me is an humble act of repentance. It's realizing he'd woe to everybody else, but it was woe is me, I'm undone, I'm unclean. And y'all, I'm unclean, I need a Savior. Isaiah said, woe is me. As you come to communion, I want you to consider this morning, woe is me, God. And some of you have had God moments. I've never had a God moment like Isaiah just had. But y'all know what I'm talking about. Those moments when you get in the presence of God. Isn't it amazing how you forget everybody else's sins and it just focuses on you. And about all you can say is, dear God, have mercy. Woe is me. I'm undone. But it's good to have those God moments. So as you come to communion this morning, consider, woe is me. I am unclean. That's how the blood of the lamb, the lamb receives us. And a numbered heart. The other thing I want you to consider when you come to communion is, is that when Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord, it didn't say, Isaiah, could, could I get you to go for us? Now, he may have, but it's not recorded in Scripture. He just overheard when he got in front of God, when he got in the presence of God, he just overheard, whom shall I send and, and who will go for us? He's overheard. Isaiah said, I'm right here, God. Send me, I'll go. So as I renew my call after 30 years this morning, I'm going to come to communion, and I'm going to come and woe is me. But I'm also going to say to God again, here I am, send me, because I say that often because I need to say that often. But I challenge you this morning to come, woe is me, just two things, woe is me, and here I am, send me. You know, every servant that we had work in the vacation Bible school, it's somewhere in there you overheard the Lord say, whom shall I send? And who could I get to go for us at vacation Bible school at Oneonta? And you said, I'll, I will, I'm right here. Give me a green T-shirt, I'm in. <laughs> so the voice of the Lord still saying that. He's still saying today, whom shall I send? Who can I get to go for us? Who can I get to go to the Philippines? Who can I get to go to Senegal? I'm right here, God. Who can I get to go work in houses and Appalachian service projects? I'm right here, God. Send me. I'll go. When you come to communion, remember, woe is me. And remember, here I am. Send me. Let's pray. God, we ask your blessing and your grace on your word. Thank you, God, for the power of testimony. And thank you. As we celebrate communion, we are reminded of the blood of the Lamb every time we take it. So, Holy Spirit, do the work that only you can do in the human heart, in the work that you do through the power of communion to remind us we need a lamb. And thank God we have one in Jesus. For we pray this in his holy name. Amen. On the screen, the technicians have put up some words that y'all are commonly used. And uh, you'll repeat the prayer in just a moment. But the invitation is Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent, who are willing to come and say, woe is me, repent of their sins, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another.
Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law, and we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world and until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. I appreciate those who prepared the bread and the cup. I just remind you that Jesus, on the night before that he died, you know, he took bread and he broke it. And just remind you, too, that Jesus, he, he was serving the Passover meal, the Passover lamb. And so he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Take and eat. And do this in remembrance. Every time you take it, I want you to remember, I died for you. He also took a cup, and uh, y'all know that he held the cup up, and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. And so we thank God for the bloody lamb. And he said, I fulfilled it in my blood. All the, everything, all the way back to Exodus in the Old Testament, the Passover, when the blood was applied to the doorpost, he said, that's me the blood of the Lamb. I'll ask Joe to come and serve him, and then we'll ask the servers to go ahead and make their way up, and we'll serve them, the body of Christ given for you, Joe, and the, and the blood of Jesus given for you. Take and eat and remember. Take the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Carol, the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Serve them. The body of Christ given for you. Come to the first row. Ushers are going to lead you. Thank you. <laughs> the splendor of the King Clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great 
is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all oh, will see how great, how great is our God. And age to age he stands, and time is in his hands. Beginning and the end, beginning and the end, and the Godhead three in one. If Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, Lion and the
again. Thank you all. Uh, interesting fact, a trivia in my life that I didn't know this week. My mom, who was a Powell, called me and said that your great, great, great grandfather surveyed Blunt County. And there's a historical marker somewhere in Blunt County. Well, I found it yesterday, and it's over in Nectar. And so it's got George Powell, who was my great He wrote a book of history in 1855. He died in 1872. So anyway, I got my picture made by the marker from my great, great, great granddaddy. And Don Barfield, I think he's here this morning. He came by my house this week. He said he actually met my granddaddy. I don't know how that happened in 1872. but. <laughs> Rayfield, Rayfield, Don Rayfield, yeah, okay, there he is right there, yeah, Don said he met him, I don't know, but in like 1870, but anyway, so uh, let's bow our heads and let's pray together, God, we love you and we praise you, thank you, God, that we come into your presence oftentimes with tears and weeping and woe is me, but sometimes, God, you love for us to come before your presence with laughter, there's healing and laughter, thank you, God, for the healing that has happened today. Uh, thank you, God, for this, this day and this service. And thank you, God, for everyone who participated and was a part of it. But through it all, may you be glorified. For we pray it 